lot of threes. I forgot this was on this one. Um, this will make more sense later, but I'll tell you what it is now. Um, so number one was going back to your simplifying exponents. If we are dividing like bases, what are we doing with the exponents? Subtracting. And then we are actually dividing the 12 and the 18. So if we divided those or simplified that, what would we get? Us? And then, yeah, by six. So subtract your exponents. So we have x to the negative three and y to the three to the third. Can't have negative exponents, so this would get moved to the denominator. So we have two y to the third in our numerator and three x to the third in our denominator. Later, after we talk about this, um, you'll be able to answer this one. But if you see any repeating x's that have two different y values, this is not a function. Okay, so make sure you have those written down. Look at your course calendar really fast. Notice your Khan Academy quiz dates. You don't have any due today. You will have some due next Friday, as well as the last day of school. I'll send out a reminder, as I always do. I probably won't do progress reports until closer to when we get back, but make sure you get those in, get those done. Um, the last day of school is also going to be our flex day, so if you're not here that day, you'll miss that day to do retakes, retake work, missing tests. Uh, make up work, things like that. And we'll need to do that when we come back. Um, when we come back, usually we come back like on the 2nd, but now we're coming back on the 3rd, so it throws our days off a little bit. Um, we are still going to take our quiz and test that week. Quiz will still be collaborative and all those things we'll still review and things like that. Um, questions about that? Right. And then um, next week, if you've not finished your tests, please come see me in the morning after school, Tuesday through Thursday, to get that done as soon as possible. You may have time at the end of class today, you may not, um, and then with each of our days, you may have time in class, you may not, so definitely come to get that done as soon as possible. Alright, so we're going to start some of this and then finish whatever after lunch. Ignore whatever unit this says, because we're actually in unit 5. Okay. So this unit is different than last unit, because last unit we're all about solving this and that. And this unit is more about function-related stuff, and you'll see what that means here when we do everything. So this first one is an ordered pair. As a set of numbers or coordinates written in the form x, y, you have used ordered pairs before to plot points. A set of ordered pairs is called a relation. So some of this will be familiar to you, some of it may be new to you, or like some of the vocab and terms we use. So I don't know if you've talked about relation before. In this example, this table has time spent studying for a test versus score on the test. This is not you guys' scores. This is random data. Um, if I ask you to look at the left side and describe what these represent, what would you say? Matthew. Okay, yes, they are representing actually the amount of time, but describing them in general. What would we say about that left side? Alex? Okay, so 
So we don't know specifically, yes, time, minutes, hours, seconds, okay. Anything else? What if I changed that question and said, what is this side called? Input is one word. Matthew, what were you going to say? X values. There's another word for X values or input, Hannah. Yes, we're not going to put that here. We are going to talk about that later. Domain is another word. So there's one more word. How do we describe X values generally? Not input, not X values, not domain, Matthew. Can you push that crate back right behind you? Thank you. Anyone want to take a guess? Also known as your independent variable, it can stand alone, usually things like time, things you can't change. Um, time is really the main thing. Right, so then the right side would be called what? Output. Y values. Your y values depend on your x values, usually in like a function, an equation. You input x values to get out and output all of those things. Then the first set of numbers in the order pair, or all of the x's, refers to the domain. The second set of numbers in the order pairs, or all of the y's, refers to the... Anyone know that word? Anna? range. So all of these words are interchangeable. Sometimes it'll say x values or input or independent variable or domain and then y values output dependent variable or range. Right? And then this one is a mapping. It illustrates how each element in the domain is paired with an element in the range and we're going to do that here in a moment. So lots of vocab in this. Right, so there are four different relations, and these are the different ways they can be re represented. We talked about ordered pairs. It could also be represented as a table. So we're going to take this table and represent it the other ways. So we're given our table. We want to uh, represent it as an ordered pair. You're going to start off with your curly brackets. This is going to say the set of all of these numbers. And then write each of your ordered pairs in parentheses. 0, 3, 5, 1, 3, negative 6, 3, negative 6, negative 7, negative 3, and then negative 4, Things I believe you've done before, put things as ordered pairs. Then we're going to take those same numbers and use our mapping. So from the table, from the ordered pairs, doesn't matter. We need to first list out our domain and range as a set of numbers, least to greatest. So for our domain, what would that be? Least to greatest. What are our x values? Least to greatest. Negative 7, negative 4, 0, 3, 5. And then for our range, what is that least to greatest? So 
and look at your table, your order pairs. Lily? Uh, negative three. Uh, Would that be the least? Yeah. Out of all of these? There's one no, lower. Mm -hmm. And then negative three. One. So when we write these, if there were any repeats, so let's say negative 7 was up there twice in our domain, we would only put that once because the set of the numbers, you only need once to say it was there. We're going to take these numbers and list them least to greatest in both of these ovals. And then comes the mapping part. We are going to look for whatever your x was, match it to your y, draw lines and arrows. So negative 7 was negative 3. Negative 4 was with 5. 0 was with 3. Three was with negative six, and then five was with one. So you should have something that looks like this that represents this x goes with this y, and so on and so forth. Okay. And then last thing, graph all of those points. I'm going to label mine. You don't have to label yours. Let's continue. <clears throat> so we graph this. If you didn't finish graphing it, do that. Yours should match mine. Again, you don't need to label them, but if you did, that's fine. Do we have any questions about the graph, about the mapping, order pairs? When you write your order pairs, make sure you do your X first, so left or right, then up or down. Anyone want to take a guess as to what this might be? Link is a relationship between the input and the output and the function. function. So a function shows the relationship between the input or the domain, the x values, the independent variable, and the output, the range, the y values, the dependent variable. And in a function, there is exactly one output for each input. What that means is your x values cannot repeat. So some of you flip over and that's fine. I'm just going to show you in this. Each of these x values have its own y value. If I had something like 5 repeating again, this would not be a function because this x value goes to two different y values. And that's kind of what the shark guy was talking about on the question. Right, so we're going to do two of these examples together, and then I'll let you do the last one. Um, the table was supposed to appear on this also, but it didn't. So on the side, draw a table. So now we're given the set of order pairs. We have to create the graph, create the mapping, create the table, and then determine if it's a function or not.
that question can really be answered at any point in time. So I'm going to start off with the graph. Again, I'm going to label mine. You don't have to do that. So 2, 5 would be up here. 3, negative 5 would be down here. 4, 5 would be back up here. And then 5, negative 5 would be back down here. For our domain, our set of numbers, what would that be least to greatest? And then for our range, okay. uh, camera negative five because we wouldn't put the repeating. Whoa. We just need to list them once. So we would put those same numbers in our oval ovals. and map them. So two goes to five. Three goes to negative five, four goes to five, and five goes to negative five. And then, before we do the table, I just want to mention this. So, your y values can have multiple x values, so like two and four going to the same y value is okay. We can't have two go to both negative five and five. That's what's not okay. In our table, we want to list our x values least to greatest, but the y's is whatever it goes with. So looking at everything, would this be a function? Do we have any repeating x's? No, so this would be a function. And that's what you have to be able to determine. Is it a function or not? Before we move on to two, do we have any questions on that one? Number two, do the same thing. Make sure you add in the table. The order of which you do this does not matter. I'm going to start with my table. Remember, least to greatest in your x's. And then just match it with your y's. Plotting our points, 0, 5 would be on the y-axis. 1, 5 would be right outside of that. Five zero would be on our x axis, and then five one would be right on top of that. What would the set of our domain be, least to greatest? Matthew. Zero one five five. And we wouldn't put the five twice, so just zero one five. And then our set of values for our range. Still these two greatest. So zero, one, five again. Put those in your ovals. Zero goes with five. One also goes with five. And then five goes with zero. And one. Is this one a function? Do we have any repeating x's? Matthew. 
Not just that there's two fives, but there's two fives that go to two different things. That's specifically why it's not a function. So wherever you see that, whether it was in the ordered pair, in the table, on the graph, or if you saw in the mapping, wherever you saw it, that would tell you this is not a function. Now, I do want to show you this. If in this table or in your order pairs or whatever, this said 5-0 twice or 5-1 twice, that would be a function. It does have the same x value going to two y values, but that y value is the same. So it's not going to two different y values. So that's still a function. Questions on any of that? Try number three. Make the mapping, the table, the graph. And then when you finish that, I will come around and check it. So raise your hand when you finish that. Do any sections? You want to do one too? Okay. Yeah, whichever one. Just not all of them, just pick one. You can make the pass. Okay, give me one second, please. Victoria, hold on one second. Please, Sam, go ahead. You can keep going. I want to do the domain range.
Anyone want to answer whether it's a function or not? Go for it. All right. So we should all have similar things. Table your x values need to be least to greatest, and then whatever match matches. Whatever. Your graph should look very similar to this. I'm going to label these points just so you know which one is which. Your domain and range need to be in curly brackets, least to greatest, without any repeats. Same thing with your ovals, your mapping, and then make sure these have arrows. Sure. And this was not a function because of a couple things. If you're looking in your ordered pairs, your three goes to two different y values, or in your table, or in your graph, or in the mapping. So as long as you saw that, saw that somewhere, that was not a function. Questions on that one? Alright. Go on to the next page. Anyone know what this blank is? the vertical line test. So we use the vertical line test specifically on graphs. If there's any place where you could draw a vertical straight up and down line and it passes more than one point, then it is not a function. So if I were to draw a vertical line through each of these points, and some of these aren't great, but pretend they were. Do any of these lines touch more than one point? No, so that means this is a function. If I did the same thing for this one, do any of these lines touch more than one point? Yes, so that would not be a function. So then for this one, would this be a function? No. Because everywhere except right here, where it only has one point, it has multiple points. What about this last one? Is this one a function? Yes. Yes. So no matter where I draw my lines, none of them touch more than one place. Questions on how the vertical line test works? Right. On this next page, I want you to do this page. When you finish, raise your hand, I'll come check them. After you finish, you can work on the one Khan Academy that's due next week on this. And then after that, if you need to finish your test, you can do that. Or if you finished already and want more practice, you can do the very last page. But this and then Khan Academy, then you can finish tests. Um, make sure that you answer this. Explain why. So. If it's a no, show why. If it's a yes, you can say the X's don't repeat. You guys can work together. 